Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. This proverb originated in the 1600s, and it was found in a book written by Anthony Weldon. The original sentiment, though, comes from an Italian proverb that more or less states the same thing. He that deceives me the first time, it's his fault. He that deceives me a second time, it's my fault. I've thought more and more about this proverb as I've seen the world begin to spiral yet again back into chaos as we have seen the news that it appears that the new virus or the variant is making its way to the country of America yet again. Make no mistake, this is intentional, this is deliberate, and this is yet another lever that is being pulled by the powers that be in order to further subjugate the United States of America and the rest of the world as a result. It's ridiculous when you think back at what we were forced to go through over these past three years and just how much evidence that came out over that period of time. I frequently talk about when the first lockdowns were put into effect in 2020. I consider that actually to be a bit of a blessing, even though it was draconian at the time and continued to be. The reason I say that is because for those first few precious months, for the first time in a long time, throughout all corners of the world, Individuals were forced to sit at home with their thoughts and spend time doing more research because there were no distractions. There were no sporting events. There was really nothing else to look forward to besides binge watching whatever was on TV. And eventually that ran out, too. So for the first three months, I considered it to be a renaissance. Individuals began asking questions and questioning the official narrative. I myself, I've had asthma since I was born. And originally when I heard the news that that virus was coming in 2020, they indicated that there might be further complications for individuals who did have asthma. So at first I was a little bit concerned, but then because I was free from distractions, I was able to start putting pieces together and realize that the puzzle didn't quite come together the way the powers that be would hope it would. One of the first indicators that I saw and noticed that I realized that pointed to this being a little bit ridiculous was the fact that there were individuals who were still flying on airplanes and they were forced to distance socially every six feet. But then they sat on the airplane right next to each other. And I couldn't help but think if this is such a dangerous thing, why is it that individuals are still even able to fly at all? So I started realizing very early on uh, truly what the agenda was, and we saw just how insidious it became. Even though initially we all remember the message was 15 days to slow the spread. We all remember that vividly. And now would you believe that there are parts of America right now that are sending that same message yet again? I saw an article about Morris College in Atlanta. And they're one of the institutions of higher learning that have chosen to re-implement their mask mandates because they are preparing for this next wave, which is COVID BA.2.86, I believe. It's just ridiculous. I mean, it's not quite well branded as the first round was, but they're gearing up for all this. And we've actually seen uh, that the Biden administration has started to purchase all sorts of protective equipment. They are doing this again. Back in 2020, many of us realized what was taking place was more or less a beta test, a compliance test. And those in power were seeing who would choose to comply or hold their nose and comply because there were even plenty of individuals on the right side of the aisle, even some of your favorite influencers, believe it or not, who would say publicly, oh, I'm not going to comply with this mandate, but they would quietly and secretly put their little covering back on where the little face diaper when they had to because they had to fly around the country to give speeches to you where they were paid to speak to you about how they're fighting for you, even when they're clandestinely complying with these same policies and mandates. Dates. Far too many individuals did that in the beginning. Over time, the veil began to be lifted, and that's when you started to see more pushback. In the South, obviously, we choose not to abide by these ridiculous mandates in many areas, but even in the South itself, there are areas, and there's places like Austin, Texas, where you're going to find a lot of people who are willing to just do whatever the government tells them to do. I find it disquieting because the spirit of America, that spirit of resilience, that indomitable spirit seems to be fading away quickly and even more quickly than ever before. I say that because people seem to want to be dominated, especially on the left side of the aisle. 
It's become a a macabre display of, oh, govern me harder, daddy. Yes, tell me what to do. Looking at the government as if the government is the only entity that can save them and completely abdicating critical thinking whatsoever. By now, there is more than enough information for you to realize that putting a covering on your face or walking in a restaurant and wearing it and then sitting down and taking it off, it doesn't make any logical sense. And we saw how accredited doctors in the past were maligned and even disbarred in some cases from their employment because they chose to acknowledge the real science. I would argue, though, that even with the knowledge of this latest wave coming, even as we see Lionsgate and other individuals in Hollywood choosing to go backwards in time and run this out again, I'll tell you this. Compare where we are now to where we were in 2020. If you remember, the first rumors and waves started coming out in February of 2020. And that was only about nine months before the election. Now here, it's starting to be rolled out in September of 2023, which is 14 months away from the next election. I would posit this fact to you. The elites, big pharma, the entire complex realizes now that they failed round one, even though there were plenty of individuals who did comply. They failed round one. They failed the, 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 the cards. They failed the, oh, you can't go into here unless you have documentation. They failed that part. And now what they're realizing is we need to create a much longer runway in order to ensure that more individuals will comply with these mandates. But I'm here to tell you, I'm one individual who is not going to comply whatsoever. I don't care what I'm doing, where I am. If it costs me my even my source of employment, I was ready to lose my job the first time that this came around. That is what it's going to take. Because if you're going to sit there and say, oh, well, I need my job, what you're saying is you care less about your bodily autonomy than you do about a paycheck. That's very telling. And honestly, the solution is very simple. With all the millions of people who are truly awake in America and all around the world, all it takes is you all saying no with one voice. We cannot afford to have individuals say, oh, I guess I just have to do this for for what's to come. What have I been telling you guys on these live streams for several weeks, months, and years now? The best way to be prepared is to become as self-sufficient as possible so that if that day comes where you're forced to comply with X, Y, or Z, or you lose this or you lose that, you've already built your own community of like-minded individuals. Public Square is part of it, yes, but it can't be the entire final solution. They are going to run this out again because they saw it worked with just enough individuals for them to think this is what's going to help us in 2024. We aren't stupid. We know what this is for. This is their built in ace in the hole to use whenever there is an election. So they can go behind our backs and change rules and election laws the last minute to ensure that the process is not nearly as secure as it used to be. The question also becomes, why would anyone want this administration to continue being in leadership? We've seen how they acted most recently towards the fires in Hawaii, where Biden, he finally made his way out there and he wants to tell people in the audience during his speech how he had a small kitchen fire in his home. And that's the same thing as what they're going through right now. Something's not right with that. Biden can't string two coherent words together appears to fall asleep more and more regularly. And on top of that, the families that lost their homes in Maui are getting, or in Hawaii in general, the families that lost their homes are getting $700 a piece. And remind yourself how much money we continue to throw into the black hole that is Ukraine for no reason whatsoever. This administration cares nothing about the American people or its citizens whatsoever. It's not just constrained even to America. Looking in places like Canada, Canada's on fire too, in case you didn't know. Uh, the Tenerife Islands, I believe, which is a part of Spain or Spanish Canary Islands, they're on fire too. There are so many coincidences. They can no longer be called coincidences. Anyone who is awake is aware this is a coordinated effort to cripple you and subjugate you and dominate you yet again. And I'll tell you this too, just because the first wave didn't work the way they wanted it to, 
doesn't mean they aren't going to be equally as ruthless the second time around. That's why the title of this video is Fool Me Once. A lot of people were caught flat-footed in 2020. They weren't sure what to know, what to believe, where to research. But I'll tell you what, we have people on our side who are knowledgeable, who know what the facts truly are, who can point you to the data itself that tells you that all these mandates did nothing. They actually hurt the youth in the country because the youth were are now socially stunted in many cases. They hurt so many facets of our supply chain for no reason. The reaction to, oh my gosh, I came down with the virus. I have to quarantine myself for 14 days. It didn't make sense to begin with, but that kept people home, kept them comfortable. Just sit there and watch your TikTok videos some more. Just watch your Netflix some more while we get ready for the next big play. It's coming. And if we think about being fooled yet again, the last thing I want to touch on is the fact that we know that Trump is going to be arrested on Thursday down in Georgia by a black woman, radical leftist DA. And this individual, of course, is loved by the left because the left loves their optics, right? And they will do everything in their power to say, oh, look, we did it again. Oh, we got him. We're going to get a mugshot this time. Nothing's going to come from this because we all know that Trump is simply an individual that you cannot bring down with these spurious allegations. And it's really funny because anyone who would cheer about this new person who is going to be going after Trump, they couldn't even tell you what a woman was, what a black woman was a few months ago. But they also wanted to have Katanji Brown Jackson be put on the Supreme Court because she's a black woman. What's a woman? I don't know. We are living in ridiculously high levels of clown world. But those in power and those who wish to remain in power will maintain their stranglehold for as long as those of us out there continue to be fooled time and time again. So I think back to those words, fool me once, shame on you. Those who fooled us the first time and fooled millions and millions and millions of people, they should be called to account. The time has passed for strongly worded letters or hearings or committees. You might call me a radical, but the time has come for us to treat individuals who committed crimes against humanity the way they deserve to be treated. And you know what I mean by that. If we don't see that level of justice come now, they will continue and soldier forward on and on because they see you as a useless eater. They see you as absolutely worthless. They think the world belongs to them. We know who the world belongs to. That should give you some peace. But even now, as we see, oh, the next variant's coming out. Oh, we're going to get Trump this time. Oh, look at this coincidence. Oh, we're so sorry about Maui, but we're going to get money to Ukraine. They're going to play the same thing out over and over again. It's up to you to make sure that this time, even if you were fooled the first time, that you are not fooled the second time. Because fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. That's the message for this video. Let's pray. God, in Psalm chapter 16, verse 8, you remind us that because you are at our right hand, we shall not be moved. I ask you to reach out and touch everyone who's going to watch this video, everyone watching now on the live, and remind them that when you are with us, nothing can be against us. And we ask you now to give us the resolve to stand firm this time, to refuse to comply with what we know is not right, and to do so in a manner that is peaceful, but to also be able to reach out and touch other individuals and help remove the scales from their eyes so they can realize that they are being fooled yet again before time runs out. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. That's the message for this video. If you like the content, all I ask you to do is to press that like button on my page. Press the share button. Share with other individuals. Go to my other social media profile. That's all I ask of you. That's things you can do to help me continue to amplify my voice. And I cannot thank you enough for choosing to take it upon yourself to do that for me. But you know how it is. It's Damani Felder. You can find me on Facebook. Find me on Instagram. Find me on Twitter. Find me on TikTok. Find me on YouTube at The Wright Brothers. Find me on Parlor. Find me on Gab. Find me on True Social. Find me on Telegram. The list goes on and on. I will still be here as long as God gives these platforms the ability to exist, creating the content you have come to expect from me. I say this all the time. You don't have to go to seminary to understand the Bible. You don't have to be a Michelin star chef to know how to cook. And you don't have to be a political science whiz to understand the way politics works. But thank you so much for watching. I love you all. I appreciate you all. 
and I'll catch you in the next one.